Hi guys, welcome to the Ardor server. So in some of my recent videos, I've talked about raid controllers and people have commented on those videos with concerns about raid controllers. And one of those concerns is that there, these raid controllers have a vendor lock-in issue. And basically they're saying that if you have a hardware raid array setup and that raid controller were to fail on you, then the only way to recover your raid array is to get the same exact model raid controller from the same manufacturer. And that simply isn't true. Also, there are concerns that RAID arrays uh, or RAID controllers use a proprietary format that, you know, is black magic and, and you don't want that. You want to, like, you know, use something that's open and people understand and, and uh, you know. So uh, that also, by the way, is not true, okay? There's something called a DDF, which is a data disk format, and that's um, not necessarily an industry-wide standard, but it is a specification that uh, you can read about and people have written software for it um, outside of RAID controllers. And so you can actually access uh, your RAID array without a RAID controller at all. And so in today's video, I'm gonna show you uh, a RAID array that I've already set up. I have eight drives in the server today and I've got a RAID controller here. This, let me pull it out and show you guys, is an IBM M5015. And this is a LSI SAS 2108 based RAID controller. I've got a proper battery backup for the cache. We've got the RAID controller chip under the heatsink and two SAS ports. So the RAID array that I have in the server today, uh, I've already created it just to save you guys some time. Um, I created with this controller and I'm gonna plug all this stuff together and show you guys that RAID array and I actually put some data on it so you'll see that there's data on it and all that stuff. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna switch out this RAID controller for a different RAID controller. And I'm gonna show you that you can still access your data using a different RAID controller. Now, albeit from the same manufacturer because all I have around here are LSI based uh, RAID controllers. But at least that gives you uh, some indication that, you know, if you have a really old RAID controller and you're afraid that you're no longer gonna be able to get a replacement for it, you don't really have to worry too much about that. You can get a newer RAID controller and still access your hardware RAID array. And then finally, at the very end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to uh, access that RAID array with no RAID controller at all. I'm gonna use an HBA and some software, and we're gonna see that we can still access our data on a hardware RAID array that was created by this um, hardware RAID controller. So anyway, uh, stick around to the very end. I think you guys will uh, really find that kind of surprising if you've been afraid of using RAID controllers because you've read on the internet that you will be locked into a particular vendor and that you know if you can't replace the RAID, RAID controller that you completely lose access to your data. You know None of that is true. So the point of today's video is that I don't want you guys to be afraid of RAID. I'm not afraid of RAID. I don't want you guys to be afraid of RAID. Now, you know, if you've been watching my channel, you know I'm a huge uh, supporter and enthusiast with ZFS. So I'm primarily into HBAs with ZFS and software RAID, that kind of stuff. So I'm not a, necessarily a huge proponent of using hardware RAID these days, but I'm not afraid of using it. And I don't want you guys to be afraid of using it. All right, so before we get into this, do me a favor and smash that like button today for the YouTube algorithm so this video gets out to more people because I don't want people to be afraid of using hardware RAID for the wrong reasons. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug my SAS cable in, and we're gonna fire this guy up. We'll get on the virtual console. I'm gonna show you the RAID array, and then we'll come back and swap things out. All right, guys, so we have the server booted up. I'm logged in on a SSH terminal, and so before we get started, let's run LSPCI. And I just want to show you that we have the RAID controller in here. All right, so you'll see that this is a SAS 2108 based RAID controller. It is the Serve RAID M5015 uh, controller that you just saw earlier. And if we run LSCSI, we'll see that there's already a virtual disk um, on that Serve RAID M5015 RAID controller and it's uh, showing up on the system as dev sdb and i've actually already created a let's say i think probably lsb blk so sdb already has one partition which is the entire disk and i've already formatted and put some data on it so i'm going to go ahead and mount that and i'll put it uh, under the slash data folder 
All right, so now we have it mounted under slash data. It's about 3.2 terabytes. And let's go in here. All right, so in this folder slash data that's on that RAID array, so actually I should show you guys the configuration of that RAID array. So let me run Mega CLI. Uh, okay, I think it's not in my path. Let me go ahead and yeah, okay. I'm gonna add the Mega CLI to my path, so I should be able to run it now. Okay, so here's Mega CLI, and um, well, let's just do ADP all info a zero just to see the RAID controller. Okay, so here we see the IBM Serve RAID M5015 SAS uh, RAID controller. All right, and let me show you the RAID volume which is uh, logical drive info, uh, logical, drive, logical drive zero on controller zero. All right, so here you'll see virtual drive zero is a uh, RAID 5 array, and it's about 3.176 terabytes uh, using 512, uh, 512 uh, byte size sectors. And there is a parity drive uh, that is about 500 gigabytes. These are ancient 500 gigabyte drives here. So, all right. So anyway, you can see that this is, and it's been doing a background initialization here, about 7% complete so far. But anyway, uh, we have a RAID 5 array here, basically. And that's what's in this slash data folder that's mounted. Um, the SDB1 that I just mounted. Okay, that's that RAID array. And in here, you'll see I've got a couple of files here. Um, well, the log files from the mega CLI command showed up, but okay. Anyway, basically I have a copy of my RAID versus HBA video, uh, the original MP4 file here. And I've also created a SHA-1 hash, and we're just going to use that to verify that the data is fully intact. And so I'll just kind of show you that if I do a SHA-1 sum check on that file, it's going to read the entire uh, MP4 file and do a checksum and make sure the checksum matches. And so indeed it does, so it says okay. All right, so we're, this is a good starting point. We've got the data, we've got a hash of that data. So this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to unmount this. Okay, I'm gonna unmount the RAID array. I'm gonna shut this down and we're gonna put a different RAID controller in the system connected to these exact same drives. All right, guys, so I've shut down the server and I'm gonna disconnect this RAID controller from my array. And so as you've already seen, we have a RAID 5 array in this uh, on the eight drives that are in the system right now. I've got some data on it and that was all created using this uh, rather old RAID controller. So I'm gonna swap this out. Okay, so this is the M5015. Uh, and I'm going to be using I'm going to be using this RAID controller, which is a newer uh, SAS 2108 based. Let's get this to the camera here so you can see it. So this is a newer LSI, is genuine LSI um, SAS 21 no 20 2208 based RAID controller. This is a PCIe 3 card, and instead of having a battery backup unit, this actually has a super cap because it's got the cache vault module that basically saves your cache. Um, to flash uh, memory. All right, so this is a more modern system with uh, you know slightly better cache protection technology and all that stuff. So let me kind of plug this in here. Okay, it does require this extra module to hold the the um, the super cap there. All right, so let me get some screwdrivers. All right, I'm just gonna hold this module down with a screw here. And uh, we'll also lock down the RAID controller. And I'm gonna plug that RAID, RAID 5 array that we uh, created originally with the older RAID controller. I'm gonna plug it into this newer RAID controller. All right, so let's go fire this guy up and we'll see that we can still access our data. All right, so the server should be booted up now with the other RAID controller, so let's go ahead and log in. 
All right, so first thing I want to show you is that we have a different RAID controller here. So let me do LSPCI. All right, so you'll see that we now have a RAID controller that is based on the 2208 chipset. And this is basically the 9271-8i controller. All right, so let's run Mega CLI and look at the controller. All right, so here we have the LSI Mega Raid SAS 9271 controller. All right, so this is a different controller. And let's see if we can see that same RAID volume from the old controller. All right, so I'm going to run dash LD info, which gives me the logical drive info on array zero on controller zero. All right, so here it is, virtual drive zero. RAID 5, 3.176 terabytes, same thing as we saw earlier. All right, so it's recognized by the new RAID controller. And if we run LSCSI, indeed we see dev SDB still here, but showing up instead of the serve RAID M5015, it's showing up under the new controller, the Mega RAID 9271-8i. All right, now if everything's intact, there should be a partition on that thing. All right, and indeed there is. Here's SDB and there's an SDB1 partition. And I should be able to mount this just like I did in the with the previous controller. So we'll mount this under slash data just as we did before. And all right, so successfully mounted. And let's go in here. And so this is the 3.2 terabyte partition and all our files are still here. And in fact, let's just run that checksum again, make sure that our file didn't get corrupted or anything. So remember, when it's, when it's calculating a checksum on this file, it's reading the entire file. And it comes back okay. So that means our checksum has not changed. The data is fully intact. All right, so this should dispel the myth that if your rate controller fails that you have to replace it with the exact same RAID controller. You don't necessarily have to do that. Now, this doesn't mean that all RAID controllers are cross compatible. I am using uh, LSI RAID controllers of different generations. And so these LSI RAID controllers, at least the ones in the last 10 or so many years, have used a uh, format called DDF, data disk, data disk format. And if you want to know more about that, I'll leave a link down in the description to a file where you can read more about that um, specification. But basically, because LSI RAID controls use DDF, they can basically migrate their RAID arrays to different controllers. There's some level of cross compatibility. Now, sometimes you won't be able to uh, downgrade a controller because as the controller imports the new uh, or the old RAID configuration, it might update it with its own extra features or you know, make some minor tweaks to the format that the old controller might not recognize. So you can move to a newer controller. You might not be able to move to an older controller. And you might not be able to move to a controller of a different manufacturer if they're not using DDF. All right, so keep that in mind. Obviously, RAID controllers, um, come from many different manufacturers and maybe, uh, like I said, the DDF uh, specification is not kind of a, you know, universally adopted um, specification for how to set up RAID on disk, but it is used by LSI uh, or Broadcom Avago. And, you know, they more or less have the majority of the market share of RAID controllers. Um, there are also other RAID implementations that use DDF. So it's not just uh, LSI, um, some of the so-called fake RAID and onboard RAID controllers, Intel RAID controllers also use DDF. Okay, so I don't know about other ones like High Point. I think High Point does something different and Adapt Tech, I'm not really sure. But anyway, uh, there is some level of cross compatibility. So you don't have to worry that if your RAID controller dies that you're completely screwed if you cannot find that same exact controller again. All right, so next step. I'm going to shut this machine down. I'm going to replace that RAID controller with a HBA card. And we'll see how, what happens from there. All right, let me unmount this. 
and we'll shut down. All right, guys, so we shut down the machine. Uh, as you saw, we can still access our old RAID 5 array made with a from the older RAID controller on this new RAID controller. And so now we're going to actually get rid of all RAID controllers. So I'm going to remove this one. Let me unplug the SAS cables first. All right, so say bye-bye to the RAID controller. And we're gonna be using a LSI HBA controller. So no RAID functionality, this is flash to IT mode. And I'm gonna plug that RAID array to this HBA. So let me go ahead and install this. And go ahead and screw this guy down too. And we'll plug in the cables. So now we're going to access the RAID array drives using an HBA controller. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, let's fire this guy up and go to the virtual console. All right, so we have the server booting up right now with the HBA, okay? The RAID disks are just as they were. I've only replaced the RAID controller with an HBA controller. So let's go ahead and log in. All right, so I'm gonna show you first that the RAID controller is now replaced with an HBA. All right, so you'll see we no longer have a RAID controller here, but we have a uh, SAS controller. And this is indeed based on a SAS 2008 HBA. All right, and if I run SAS to flash, you guys will see that this is in IT mode with the latest firmware. For this controller. All right, so now if I run LSCSI, you'll see that I don't have a dash SDB anymore that is from some sort of RAID control. I just have the individual disks. All right, now I don't, I can't access the data immediately like this, but what I can do is I can take those individual disks and I can reassemble them in software so that they, I can access them again. All right, so in the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna use MDADM. So this is a the Linux software RAID subsystem. We'll do assemble, scan. And so we're basically gonna scan all the drives and see if there are any uh, RAID configuration metadata that it recognizes and try to figure out how to assemble this. And this is actually works fairly well. So there's not a lot of um, extra steps you need to do. So we'll go ahead and run this. All right, so it found a uh, container that it's calling dev MD DDF zero. And so that DDF, by the way, is that data disk format that I was talking about, that specification. So now there are different types of um, data disk formats or you know on disk formats for RAID arrays. Uh, DDF is you know adopted by uh, LSI and Intel and some other ones. And so it's it's probably the most well a most broadly adopted uh, specification. Again, not all RAID controller manufacturers adopt the same specification, but um, the Linux software RAID system understands these things. And so it found uh, eight drives that it has assembled into um, this container. And so we have dev MD126. Uh, and so I believe I can take a look at that configuration one, two, six, oh, MD stat here. Okay, so here we have uh, MD126 is active and is a RAID 5, just as it was in with the hardware RAID controller. And if we look under dev uh, MD126, or let's just actually do LSBLK. Okay, so MD126 has an MD126P1 partition. And I bet that is the partition um, that we had on the RAID array previously. So let's go ahead and see if we can mount that. Okay. I'm gonna mount it under slash data, just as we did before 
with the RAID controllers, except this time without a RAID controller, just an HBA and software. All right, mounted successfully. Let's take a look. Slash data is 3.2 terabytes, just as it was before. And let's go in there. And all the files are still there. But before we rejoice, let's run a checksum. So this is going to force a read on that entire uh, MP4 file and make sure that it's fully intact. And indeed it is. So here we go. It says OK. That means that that file has not changed. And so there you have it, guys. A hardware RAID array that was migrated to a different RAID controller and then migrated to an HBA controller using software RAID to reassemble it to access that data all over again. All right. So guys, don't be afraid of RAID. There are things that are posted out there that are, are not always 100% true. Now, like I mentioned earlier, not all RAID controller manufacturers use the same uh, specifications. So that part is true. There is some truth to that statement, but it's not as scary as it's made out to be. You can access your RAID array using different controllers. You can even access your RAID array using software with an HBA. All right. And the Linux software RAID uh, subsystem actually recognizes multiple formats, not just DDF, but DDF being the most common format. Um, you know, so the majority of cases, you're going to be just fine. So if you lose your RAID controller and you're not able to uh, acquire a replacement immediately, you don't have a newer RAID controller sitting around, um, maybe you, know, you ordered one, a replacement, and that still didn't work, and you're in a hurry to get access to your data, okay? all you need is an HBA and Linux software RAID to reassemble your hardware RAID array and access your data again. All right, so now that said, okay, and someone pointed this out in one of my previous videos, and I want to make that point. I totally agree with it, is that RAID is not a substitute for backups. All right. So whatever you do, make sure you have backups of your data if your data is important to you. But you don't have to sweat it if your RAID controller dies. You can still access your data using a variety of different methods. All right. So anyway, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to give me that thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, you like this sort of stuff, be sure to subscribe. And if you'd like to support my channel, go check out my eBay store. I sell all sorts of server gear, including HBAs that are already flashed to IT mode with the latest firmware ready for your ZFS servers or your Unraid servers or what have you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.